All right, hello everyone. Welcome to our latest edition of PD in your PJs with Illinois Agriculture in the Classroom. We're excited to be with you here today to talk about all of our activities for the month of April focused on soybeans and Earth Day. So we'll get right into it here. So we have a, a long list of activities and lessons planned for, uh, for the month of April. So here's our schedule right here. And we're gonna talk about each of these different lessons and activities, including our field trip and our virtual author interview that we're gonna do as well. And then this full schedule is available on our blog on the site dedicated to this month's PD and your PJs. So you'll be able to access that and make sure you get everything scheduled that you would like to participate in. So we're going to start off again here this month talking about a few different book recommendations. And so some books that uh, pair well with soybeans as well as Earth Day. So the first one, and if you've gone to any of our, our sessions here over the last year, you've probably heard us talk about Full of Beans here by Peggy Thomas. Uh, Full of Beans, Henry Ford Grows a Car. This is a really great book uh, of the story of Henry Ford, uh, who back in the 40s and the 30s, uh, was experimenting with soybean plastic and trying to build a car using soybeans and actually had it figured out. And then World, World War II hit and uh, a lot of production got transferred to wartime production. And the idea just kind of sat there and uh, they didn't do much with it. So this is the story of uh, Henry Ford's dedication to, uh, to sustainability and using renewable resources a long, long time ago. And uh, in a lot of ways, the Ford Motor Company is continuing that today with their use of soybean plastics in their cars today. So really great book, a lot of really great back matter in here as well uh, with actual pictures from Henry Ford's time and a lot of uh, nonfiction material here in the back as well. A lot of good soybean information as well. Our next book here is Pod to Plate by Julie Bluner, uh, The Life Cycle of Soybeans. This is a really great nonfiction. Uh, it's a simple book, um, tells the story of how soybeans are grown and how they get from the field to our plates in various forms. So another great one to access as well. We'll have a link. You can actually get an online version of this or order those. We'll have a link um, for that as well. Um, the last book I want to recommend is Oh Say Can You Seed? This is a really great book just about plant growth and, and how things grow. Uh, this is a good example of a book that looks like it'd be a, a, you know, a really young elementary, lower elementary age, but actually this book has a lot of really you know, pretty advanced scientific things dealing with how things grow. And so this is a great book that you can use for a lot of different age groups to introduce some of the basic ideas of photosynthesis and seed germination and all those kind of ideas. So uh, yeah, another good one, oh, oh Say Can You Seed, all about flowering plants. All right, so those are my three book recommendations here for April. I'll turn it here over to Kevin. And uh, I'm gonna start with Auntie Yang's Great Soybean Picnic uh, by Jenny Lowe. And Jenny Lowe, uh, uh, Illinois author. This was our 2019 Illinois Read Selection with Jenny Lowe as an Illinois author. And this tells the story of two Chinese immigrant families that come to the Midwest, specifically Indiana and Illinois, uh, as their parents uh, pursue uh, uh, advanced education. And these four cousins grow up and it tells the story of these four cousins and the importance of food to uh, family gatherings. And it's uh, what's really cool about it is, is uh, her sister Beth tells the story with illustrations and illustrates this on uh, circular forms. And if you look really closely, all of the plates are hand painted on Chinese plates, on, on actual plates. So uh, Stephanie's got a lesson coming up a little bit that, that'll tell you about that. But not only is this a, a, great, uh, a great book, but it actually has uh, several pages of back matter talking about, uh, about soybeans and what went on. So uh, both the Henry Ford book and Auntie Yang's Great Soybean Picnic have, have great back matter that actually help tell the story of soybeans and where, where it goes from there. Um, next, I have uh, another great book called One Well, The Story of Water on Earth by Rochelle Strauss. And this is talking about all the water on Earth. Um, several of you have seen our, our great graphic uh, illustration and, and demonstration of slicing up the apple and how much of the apple is actually used for uh, land mass for agriculture. There's a, there's, a similar, there's a similar activity that goes along with water and you start off with all of the water on earth and you start with a gallon jug. And uh, what you end up with is one drop of that water is the water that's in the water cycle uh, that we use. So you take out the salt water, you take out the polar ice caps, that kind of stuff. Then you're left with 
this one drop of water. This is a great story to go along with Earth Day, but pair really nicely with both our water and our soil ag mag that you can that you can use. So one well by Rachel Strauss. And then finally, Michael recycles uh, along with Earth Day, that whole idea of recycling what goes on with it, not only uh, um, uh, reducing, but reusing and recycling. So I think your students will enjoy Michael recycle and follow that as it goes. Um, and I'm going to put a plug in for last year. We'll put a we'll put a link to this on our blog site as well. But um, last year we had great plans for Earth Day, uh, and uh, that all came crashing to a halt, uh, uh, as as you well remember. But we've got some great lessons that go along with that. Not only the lessons that we have here, but as you're looking forward to Earth Day, go back and look at some of those lessons from last year. We have more than enough stuff to to, to fulfill all of your Earth Day needs as far as lessons go. And with that, I'll turn it over to Stephanie. Okay, um, so my three books, these are all really focused on our celebration for Earth Day. So the first one is Water is Water by Miranda Paul. And unfortunately, I don't have that book here with me at my house to show you, but um, this is a fantastic uh, picture book that takes you through the water cycle. Um, and even though it's very informative, it doesn't feel like you're reading and learning about the water cycle. They do a really good job of kids um, you know, the pictures are very kid focused, you know, them playing in the snow, going to the lake, looking at the steam coming out of their hot cocoa cup. So it just takes you through the water cycle. And the great thing about this is that at the very end of the book, they do have information about the different stages of the water cycle. So you get that information um, in there as well. The second book that I'm going to be talking about is called Love the Earth by Julian Lennon. Um, and this is a really fantastic picture book that um, these students get into their white feather flyer and it's a magical feather that takes you all around the world. Um, and this, this book in particular, there's a series of the books, but in this one in particular, it shows about planting milkweeds and, and helping with the butterflies, the monarch butterflies. It talks about cleaning up the oceans, um, exploring the planet meeting new people, learning about um, the world and making it a better place. And so it's, it's a very engaging book that teaches, you know, young um, kids to help save the environment and teaching them to love um, everything on the planet, plants, animals, humans, cultures, everything. So it's just a really great book. Um, the last book I want to talk about is called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wood, or The Wood, The Wind um, by William Kumquamba and Brian Mueller. And this is the story. It, um, it's about William Kumquamba and his family. They live in a very small village in Malawi, East Africa. And there's a really bad drought, which causes William's family to lose all their crop. Um, so they don't have any food, they can't make any money. And um, so William um, decides to spend a lot of time in the library looking for a solution and learns about windmills. And so he goes to a scrap metal yard and collects scrap metal and bicycle parts parts and ends up creating a windmill um, that brings electricity to his home um, because they can pump the water that they need to um, water their farm. And so it's just, a, it's a true story. It's a great picture. The illustrations are fantastic. And then they give you a background of um, William at the very end of the book. Um, and then there's also a movie that goes, um, that they just released a few years ago or within the last few years, that's also just fantastic. Next up are our virtual opportunities. And folks, we've had a lot of fun with our virtual opportunities. Uh, we do have a farm tour on April 1st, uh, no kidding, uh, April Fool's Day. We'll be going and watching what happens as soybeans are processed. We're working with the folks from Clarkson Grain and Sarah Gordo, and they do have other facilities throughout. They've got a great video already filmed for us, and we're gonna be, we're gonna be joined live by some folks that talk about other aspects of soybeans beyond raising them, uh, what the processing looks like, all of that. So it's gonna be a great uh, career heavy. Uh, there will be a number, I don't mean to make that sound bad, but we're gonna talk about the variety of careers that go into agricultural products beyond just the, the, the actual production of them. So uh, looking forward to that on April 1st, to going to Clarkson Grain in Sarah Gordo, Illinois. So shout out to our Piatt County folks there. Um, next up, uh, the following week on, on April 8th, we'll be uh, joined by Julie Blunier. 
And Julie is the author of Pod to Plate, The Life Cycle of Soybeans. Now, Julie is a great friend of Ag in the Classroom. In fact, she used to be a, uh, she used to be an Ag in the Classroom, um, she used to be an Ag in the Classroom education specialist. Uh, uh, but she worked with the Illinois Soybean Association to write The Life Cycle of a Soybean. This book is available. All of your county programs have the book if you want it, but it's also available for you to download as a PDF from the Illinois Soybean site. And they actually have people that read the book to you. So um, the cool part about this is uh, our authors uh, love all of our authors that we've worked with. We've had great experiences working with all of our authors, um, our Illinois authors as well. But I'm going to tell you, Julie is going to be able to tell you what it's right to, like to write a book. Uh, and uh, she's not going to hold anything back, uh, but she wrote a book specifically about soybeans. And we hope that you'll be able to join us on April 8th for Julie Blumier. But that'll take us into our April themed challenges, our April themed challenges. And Stephanie's going to tell you about those. Sure. Okay. So um, going along with our, our themes, our April theme challenges, the first one is our April classroom challenge that will come out at the end of this month in March um, so that you have the whole month to do this challenge. Um, and that's just cleaning up your schoolyard or if you are still remote, then cleaning up your, your yard or your neighborhood. So how much litter can you clean up? And um, when you get out there, make sure that you're, you, you're wearing protective gear, your gloves, you're putting it in garbage um, um, bags or using some sort of tool to pick up the garbage, making sure you wash your hands when you get back inside. But how much can you pick up? And I think you'd be surprised to see how many little pieces of litter are all over town. Um, and so that would be a great, a great way to help our planet out is by cleaning up the litter. And I know that all of our plants and animals around would really appreciate that. Our second challenge is going to be our at-home family engagement challenge. Um, and this one comes from National Ag in the Classroom, um, and it is to make soybean plastic. So making plastic out of soybeans. And so you can find um, the entire lesson on National Ag in the Classroom's website, and we will be releasing that. Um, you'll find all that information on our social media and our blog. Um, and so you can make fun little designs, however you want to do it, follow those instructions and um, have some fun with that. And then our last challenge for April is going to be our family cooking challenge. And so we are challenging you this month to um, uh, make stir fry. And we don't have an actual recipe for this because there are so many different types of recipes, depending on your uh, preference for sauces and, and vegetables and um, protein that you want to use. However, we are encouraging you to go along with our soybean um, theme as well is to use uh, tofu, um, soybean oil, edamame or edamame, I'm sorry. And um, any, any soybean related um, uh, products that you can use to help us celebrate our soybeans. All right, so I'll transition us into our lesson. So our first lesson here is actually coming from National Ag in the Classroom. We'll have a link to, the, to their lesson. And if you're not familiar with their lesson matrix, they have lessons from uh, collected from all over the country about a wide variety of agriculture topics. And we actually have a link to their website on our website as well. It's an easy way to get to it. So we encourage you to, to look at that. If there's any kind of lesson that you're looking for, um, we have lots of resources on our side, obviously, but uh, National Ag in the Classroom side is another good place to look. And so our first lesson that we're going to do here in April is my little seed house. And I've actually started an example here. So the idea is that you have this paper that they're going to cut out the frame for, and then you're going to uh, take a Ziploc bag with some uh, cotton balls and some seeds, and you're going to put some water in there, and the cotton balls will soak up that water, keep a nice moist environment for those seeds to grow. And the idea would be that you could, uh, you could take these to the window and so it's a nice warm place uh, where those seeds are gonna warm up and then germinate. This is also a good chance to do some, some experimentation with how seeds germinate. You know, you could compare if they're in a, a warmer place that, as opposed to a cold place, you could put them in darkness to see if they germinate better uh, with light or with darkness. So there's a lot, lots of different ways that you could do this. Um, we're, we're using soybean seeds in this example here. You wouldn't have to, but soybeans are a, a great crop for students to know more about. If you think about the state of Illinois, almost 75% of our state is devoted to agriculture production. And so on any given year, a good quantity of that land is, is growing soybeans. So no matter where we are in the state, there's a good chance that you know we could drive in one direction or another 
and find a field of soybeans in not too long. And so it's a plant that's, that's all around us, but one that maybe a lot of students don't know a whole lot about. And so this would be a good way to kind of introduce that. Soybeans are also a large seed. And so it's really easy to see the different seed parts as that seed starts germinating. So it's a good one to use uh, for, uh, for this experiment also. We have another lesson that you could go that could go along with this. It would just require a few more uh, ingredients for that you maybe don't readily have available. But here on the left hand side of the screen is our beanie baby activity, which again, if you're familiar with what we do at Ag in the Classroom, you've, you've probably heard us talk about beanie baby. And the idea with this one is similar to the seed house, except uh, students are going to create a warm environment by making a necklace out of this bag and putting the necklace inside their, their clothing. And so it warms it up and gets the seed to germinate. So it becomes their beanie baby, right? Uh, we use something called soil moist, which is actually uh, derived from cornstarch. It's similar to what's used in diapers and it absorbs about a hundred times of its weight in water. And so it's a, it's a nice way to do this where you, students don't have a bag full of water around their neck that could leak. Uh, it's going to soak up that water and keep that from happening. So Beanie Baby is another great one to do uh, if you're interested in experimenting with getting seeds to germinate. Again, you just have to get a hold of some of that soil moist, which is available in gar garden centers this time of year. So that's our first, for, uh, first week's lesson, My Little Seed House from National Ag in the Classroom. Our second week's lesson, we're looking more at uh, our Earth Day theme here. And so this is water cycle in a bag. And so there's an image here from our brand new water ag mag. And I'll, I'll say this too for soybeans, we have a, a very good soybean ag mag that you can get uh, a digital version online. You can also order classroom sets of those for free from your county ag literacy coordinator. Again, on our website, there's resources there to be able to order those. And uh, these pair really well with these lessons here. And so our new water ag mag has a lot of really great water related resources and focuses not just on Illinois water resources, but also just water around the world and also how we use water in agriculture. So this water cycle in a bag activity is another one using a Ziploc bag and also something that you can tape up on your classroom windows. So the idea is that you would, you can see the, uh, the, the sketch there of the, of the water cycle. So students would trace that onto a Ziploc bag, put some aquarium rocks in the bottom with a little water. And then if you put that in a warm place, the sun shining into the window, they should literally be able to see that water cycle happening inside this bag and kind of witness that firsthand. So it takes kind of an abstract concept and they can actually see that happening in the classroom. So a really simple activity that uh, kind of makes that, you know, real world applicable and makes students kind of see for themselves what that water cycle looks like. So that is our water cycle in a bag lesson. Again, pairs well uh, with some of the books we talked about and also our water ag mag. All right, I'll turn it over to Stephanie here. All right, so our third lesson for the month of April is called Color Your Plate uh, or Colors of Your Plate. And this is one of our newer lessons and it pairs with Auntie Yang's Great Soybean Picnic. And Kevin had mentioned at the beginning that the illustrations in that book are actually um, hand painted onto, uh, on, onto plates. And so it follows along with that and also takes in consideration um, nutrition for kids. And so um, we, we like the site um, myplate.gov to talk about what sort of foods um, kiddos need to be eating, um, you know, and, and have on their plate. And, and so it splits it into to different categories so that half of your plate is filled with fruits and vegetables. And then the other half is split into a fourth of that being grains and then a fourth being protein. And then you have some dairy in there as well. And when you go to the website, it really talks about the, the portions and, and different types of uh, the fruits, grains, and all that different um, stuff that you could use in your classroom to help students learn a little bit more about the food that they should be eating. And so the activity is just to use a paper plate and split the plate into the different categories and have your students um, pick out what their favorite foods are, what are their favorite vegetables, what are their favorite grains and proteins and dairy, and then um, draw that onto their plate. And you can make it a whole classroom activity and have them all share what their favorite foods are. And then after you have your favorite foods, categorize those into the different fruits, vegetables, grains, dairy, protein, all those categories. And then from there, you can have um, deeper discussions about all of that. And so that's our um, colors of your plate activity. 
And then our last activity for the month, our, our fourth week activity for April is called a windy lift. And so this is really digging into those um, renewable resources and, and um, our Earth Day celebration. And so you do need um, a few more materials than a lot of our other activities. Um, and so you can see in the picture, you just need um, a styrofoam cup, some paper that you would print the template for the, the blades out, um, some pipe cleaners, and just a few other little items. Um, and then students are trying to identify um, how, what, what is the purpose of windmills? How do they work? And if you look at the, the bottom picture, we have a student who actually made um, one in their classroom and, and he's blowing on it. And so you would attach a little bucket to the end so that when the blades are rotating, it lifts up the bucket. And so you can make it a challenge to see, you know, who can um, fill up the, the most in the cup, the most weight, and you could use um, pennies and then talk a little bit about Abraham Lincoln. You could use soybeans um, or, you know, little dry pieces of corn, any, any of those corn kernels or anything like that, that you could um, relate to agriculture would work perfect with this. Um, and then you could also, uh, you know, maybe uh, adjust the fan blades if you're using a, a an actual fan versus the students blowing on it or who can blow the hardest on there. So um, that pairs uh, perfectly with the boy who harnessed the wind. So you read that, get them all um, excited about windmills and then have them build their own and, and create a little competition out of it. So that is our windy lift activity. Well, looking ahead, we're gonna look ahead to May, but I wanna follow up with a couple of other things. First off, all this uh, information on Earth Day would also be a good chance to download Journey 2050. We talked about that last month. Uh, we'll put that on the blog site as well, how you can uh, how you can be a part of Journey 2050. It's a, it's a handheld game device uh, that students can download on a phone or a tablet or play on a Chromebook, uh, but really talks about that as aspect of sustainability throughout. Uh, Chris talked about sustainability in the Henry Ford activity. We talked about sustainability in Michael Recycles. We talked about sustainability in One Well. It makes a lot of sense, so think that. But I also, before we get into May, I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about some surprise uh, surprise visit that we've got going on. You're going to see this on uh, as early as Friday, as early as Friday, March 12th. That's when this will be released. And we're going to be promoting something that has to do with an Illinois specialty product, especially our peach and peach baskets. That's right. We're talking basketball. So on March 18th, on March 18th, the beginning of the play-in day for uh, the U of I going to the uh, going toward the uh, NCAA tournament, we're taking a special field trip to the University of Illinois State Farm Center Assembly Hall's Manny L. Jackson Basketball Hall of Fame. Really excited about this special field trip, and we're going to link everything basketball to agriculture and you'll be surprised by all of the great things that we have. So uh, that's a great place for our code word this time. Our code word is basketball. So our code word is basketball. As you fill out your form, don't forget that code word to win a cool prize. Sponsored by our friends at the Illinois Soybean Association. Really excited about them. And we've got some, uh, some great Earth Day things we'll be uh, including in that, as well as that special soybean gift uh, that, that, you'll get in the, that you'll get in the mail. So thank you for playing along with that. Code word basketball, remember that. But looking ahead to May, our theme is beef. Our theme is beef with the, with the sub-theme of flowers. Now, beef, we, uh, we encouraged you, and thank you for playing along with that. Uh, well, our author visit will be with Michelle Houts, uh, author of The Beef Princess of Practical County. We just mailed out 64 copies of those books, including two classroom sets that folks can use. Highly encourage you to look at that, the beef princess, and we're looking for a beef farm. We're going to be we're going to be touring a beef farm, and then there will also be some cool flower sub themes as well. I'm pretty sure uh, several of you have asked. We haven't seen them lately, but uh, Chris's son Lincoln he hadn't made an appearance. I'm hoping that in our May PD and your PJs you'll see Lincoln again because Chris and his wife and his son they operate a small uh, flower business, a flower farm as well. So I hope that you'll see that. So. Um, that's what we've got coming up in May, but let's look ahead one more page and let's think about this summer. Uh, a number of you have uh, expressed interest in what's going on and uh, uh, we're a year into the pandemic. So we're right at that year mark and we are thinking about what's going ahead. Um, 
We are going to be offering virtual training on a weekly basis from the middle of June till the end of July. We'll do eight weeks. Uh, more information will be coming out about that. It'll be one hour training sessions. We'll have four blocks. So there'll be two week blocks, four, four different two week blocks from the, from the first of June till the end of July, every Tuesday. So we will be offering that. It will be uh, kind of a mix of pre-recorded and some live stuff. Uh, we haven't figured that out yet. We are working with our county ag literacy programs and we are hoping that they will be able to offer in-person training. They are working very hard to provide some in-person training. Uh, some of you have been through those summer ag institutes before, but they're looking at um, <laughs> supply chain and how did the supply chain impact farmers plus uh, the, during the pandemic, plus uh, all of those aspects that go along with the environment. This has been a huge year for environmental changes uh, in the last year, talking about that and supply chain. So they are looking ahead to do uh, professional development training. Uh, we call those our summer ag institutes or summer ag academies. We are looking forward to doing those we encourage you to follow along on our website and the blog site for more information. We'll also be posting that information on social media. Of course, everything is still up in the air. We know things are changing for you on a daily, if not uh, certainly on a weekly basis, uh, definitely on a monthly basis and almost in some places daily and hourly. So I uh, encourage you to think ahead. Uh, a nice chance to earn some rejuvenation time and network with some folks from other places and think about what will be going on next year. Uh, what's going on next year? Yeah, I don't know. We got summer planned, folks, just like you, we're taking it one season at a time. So we're looking ahead to that as well, making some plans. But that's what we're looking for with that gives you a little look at look at April plus May plus even into the summer. So that's what we're looking at there. Again, we encourage you to check out our blog at beyondthebarndoor.wordpress.com for more resources. You're going to find all of the links for this. You'll find all of the uh, lesson plans for this. And uh, uh, we'll put the link to Julie Blunier's book on there. We'll make sure that, you, and again, you can download that yourself uh, to read aloud. There's a read aloud version on, online as well. Um, plus, we'll have some other great resources out there, uh, making sure that you have plenty of things to do for Earth Day. Again, we had lots of stuff planned for Earth Day last year. We've got all of those things that are up and ready to go. And make sure you're following us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Again, a huge thank you to our folks at uh, the Illinois Soybean Association for sponsoring this. Uh, if you fill out the form with our special code word, you know what our code word is. And 10, 10, think uh, March 18th. But if you fill out the form for our uh, our special code word at the uh, JOT form, Chris has made sure that you've got that. We encourage you to do that. And we thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you. We will see you again. We'll be doing this back live and in person on, on April 17th as we look ahead to our May month. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we, we recorded this, so we know that spring break is going on, but we hope that you'll have a chance to watch this at your, at your leisure as you earn some more uh, PD points and also think about uh, what's going on in April. With that, on behalf of Chris and Stephanie and myself, thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you in April and at all of our other virtual exciting field trip opportunities and our author visit. Thanks a bunch. Have a great day.